Good morning and welcome, and please do be seated for a moment. I publish the bans of marriage between Ian Mitra of this parish and Bethan Impey of the parish of St Barnabas, Southampton. Also between Timothy Ashley Simon Tyler and Megan Hannah Rees, both of this parish. If any of you knows a reason why these persons severally may not lawfully marry, you are to declare it. Secondly, from today, we will again be sharing the wine in the conventional way at the Eucharist, so that when you come forward, you will receive the bread from one of us, and then, if you choose to, move alongside to drink from the chalice. And I emphasize that element of choice. Um, it is sufficient just to receive the bread. So if you'd rather not share the cup, drink from the chalice, please don't, and please don't worry about it. Um, communion in one kind, bread only, is still full communion. What we may not now do is to dip the wafer in the wine. Please don't ask to intinct. We may not do that, but you may drink or refrain if you prefer. Finally, I'm sorry to inform you that Mick Clark died peacefully yesterday. Let us stand to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you and, and are, are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring, Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And now we sit for our first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many were baptized and were added to the community. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand to sing our first hymn, number 696, 696.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please do sit down. Back in March, when I was shut away with COVID, I came across Paolo Pasolini's 1964 film version of St. Matthew's Gospel. Two and a half hours worth in Italian with semi-reliable English subtitles. One of my favourite moments of unintended humour came in response to Jesus' profound question, Who do people say that I am? To which the disciples apparently answered, Some say you are Elijah, some John the Baptist, and some Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy? Where did he come from? Ah, Jeremiah, of course. On another level altogether, the phrase that caught my attention then came towards the end, where Jesus speaks of the religious leaders. The scribes and the Pharisees, he said, sit upon the seat of Moses and should be listened to. They know the law and the scriptures inside out and deserve to be listened to for their expertise. But, Jesus said, in terms of what they do, they should not be followed. They place impossible burdens upon the shoulders of others and will not lend a finger to help. And he seems to suggest that they are in it for themselves, setting themselves up as experts and holy men while caring little for justice or for the well-being of others. They know all about the law then, but not so much about life. In contrast, Jesus says he has come that we may have life and have it abundantly. He calls us to follow his voice as a present action, not just to rely on the teachings that have been passed down from former generations. Christ calls us now to hear his voice and to follow. What then, I wonder, does abundant life mean to you? What does it look and feel like? And what, if anything, can you do to capture that feeling? What can you do to help other people feel alive? And how actively do you try? Does the church, 
does your church help you to feel alive, or does it sometimes do the opposite? Does it land the law on you or bring the life out of you or into you, whichever way? After his resurrection, Jesus instructs Peter, the rock on which he will build the church, to feed his sheep. Not to lecture them, not to harass them, but to feed them. And perhaps the blueprint for a Christ-centred church is that we listen attentively for him, listen to each other and to what other people actually need, and then do whatever we can, each of us, to help. As we approach our annual meeting then, I think there are two challenges for us in there. To try to avoid overburdening anyone else with the things that we think they ought to be doing, or carping about them when they don't do things the way we think we'd like them to. And to ask ourselves always what we can do, each and all of us, to help other people know and trust that Jesus is the Good Shepherd and has something vital to say to them today. Returning to the Italian countryside where I began this reflection, I'm going to end with the instruction that St. Francis of Assisi gave to the faithful. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand then and affirm our faith as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us all when we pray in faith. We ask for your blessing on all those like us who will be holding their annual parish church meeting, either today or in the near future. Thank you for all the work of those who have held the office of church warden 
and for those who have served on parochial church councils over this and previous years. Please guide us in our deliberations as we consider events of the past year and the hopes for the future. We ask for your blessing on all those who confess your name, that they may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Charles our King, especially as he prepares for his forthcoming coronation. Enable those communities who are celebrating that all will be able to enjoy the festivities. Give wisdom to all in authority, whether in national government or local government. For all those who are suffering displacement as a result of war or acts of violence, we pray that there will be those who are able to help them at this time of great difficulty. Encourage all those who are working in government to work effectively together to bring about peace and a fairer society. Direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families, friends and neighbours. We ask for your continued blessing on all who live, work or worship within this parish. Many people in this parish give so generously of their time to help others in countless different ways, encourage and strengthen them in their different roles. We ask for your blessing on all families that they will be able to stay, stay safe. Please bless them, our friends and neighbours, whether close to us here or many miles away. Let us keep a moment of silence to remember them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Please help and encourage all who work in the caring professions and especially those who work in the emergency services. We ask for your continuing blessing on all those who care for family members or friends especially those with either disabilities or very difficult health conditions. Give all who suffer courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have recently died, both here at home and abroad. Give comfort to all who grieve at this time and for the loved ones who have recently departed from us and especially Mick Clark. We remember all those who have gone before us and for those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Mary and St. Nicholas and of all those who have gone before us, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, would you stand?
The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. And offer one another a sign of peace. And now we sing our second hymn, number 800, 800. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. 
The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth, for by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. Lord God, you are the Most Holy One, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross, we celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ, and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, 
and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Blessed Mary, St. Nicholas, St. Catherine, St. Peter, St. Edith and all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us, us keep, keep the feast. feast.
Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us, to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Just before our final hymn, then, a reminder that immediately after the service there is coffee, and then we hope to reconvene for our annual meeting by quarter past 11. We're doing quite nicely, so we'll have a little gap between service and 11.15 meeting. Let us stand then to sing our final hymn, number 221, 221, New Choirs of New Jerusalem. In baptism you have adopted us as your children, made us members of the body of Christ, and chosen us as inheritors of your kingdom. We thank you that in this Eucharist you renew your promises within us. Empower us by your Spirit to witness and to serve, and send us out as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, 
make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.